Hello everyone, Justin Vakuli here with yet another video in my Stoic Philosophy video series titled Stoicism, Jordan Peterson, and Identity Politics. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and my website at justinvakuli.com. Links are in the video description. My Stoic Philosophy video series explores the philosophical tradition of Stoicism with goals to inform, empower, and help others benefit from the practical wisdom of ancient Greek, Roman, and modern thinkers. I tackle many topics, including handling adversity, finding meaning in life, working toward contentment, dealing with change, anger, and gratitude. Dr. Jordan B. Peterson is a clinical psychologist and professor in Toronto who received a large deal of attention in recent months, mainly because of his opposition to Bill C-16 in Canada from openparliament.ca. Bill C-16 is an act to amend the Canadian Human Rights Act and the Criminal Code. This enactment amends the Canadian Human Rights Act to add gender identity and gender expression to the list of prohibited grounds of discrimination. This enactment also amends the Criminal Code to extend the protection against hate propaganda set out in that act to any section of the public that is distinguished by gender identity or expression, and to clearly set out that evidence as an offense was motivated by bias, prejudice, or hate based on gender identity or expression, constitutes an aggravating circumstance court must take into consideration when it imposes a sentence. So, what might it mean to share hate propaganda or an act of bias, prejudice, or hate based on gender identity? What is an aggravating circumstance? Peter Peterson is worried that failure to use certain gender pronouns beyond the common he and her, which include z and zer, could constitute a violation of Canadian law under Bill C-16. In fact, as a report from the BBC explains, Peterson's failing to use certain gender pronouns and even arguing against the bill's merits or implications could constitute a violation of the Ontario Human Rights Code. Further, administrators from Peterson's university published a letter following Peterson's concerns about Bill C-16 after his concerns went viral. They wrote, The refusal by a teacher or a colleague to use the personal pronoun that is an expression of the person's gender identity can constitute discrimination. They also urged Peterson to stop making statements about his opposition to Bill C-16 and use of certain gender pronouns, noting his refusal to use certain pronouns, quote, can constitute discrimination, unquote. Peterson argues in his many YouTube videos and appearances that he has a serious problem with government officials mandating the use of particular language on pain of punishment, including but not limited to fines, censorship, mandatory anti-harassment training and anti-bias training, loss of livelihood. He recalls tactics used by totalitarian regimes throughout history and the impacts controlled language and curbing free speech could have. In an interview with a BBC reporter, Peterson says, quote, I've studied authoritarianism for a very long time, for 40 years, and they've been started by people's attempts to control the ideological and linguistic territory. There's no way I'm going to use words made up by people who are doing that. Not a chance. So Peterson imposes this particular attempt to revise Canadian law. But does this mean that he hates LGBT individuals or wants to deny people rights? Is he transphobic? Is he peddling hate propaganda or hate speech, causing distress to people or contributing toward an unsafe, hostile environment? Are Peterson's words tantamount to violence? In the eyes of some, shall we say, opponents of Peterson, he is a moral monster and his disagreement with their particular viewpoints is tantamount to hatred. This is sadly a common attitude in recent years which I have seen that people construe disagreement as gross disrespect and an assault on an individual, rather than merely what it is, disagreement. Rather than discussing the merits of ideas and having a civil debate or discussion, some instead choose to vilify individuals and make attempts to interfere with their daily lives by disrupting events with white noise machines, air horns, pulling fire alarms at events, issuing bomb threats, engaging in violence, harassing event attendees, and shouting. Campaigns aimed at vilifying speakers also pressure universities to cancel events. Groups, many who can't afford it, they're forced to pay large costs for security in order for events to happen due to actions from disruptive individuals. A recent Jordan Peterson appearance at McMaster University was interrupted with some of these tactics as people in the crowd, a mob of individuals shouted, no free speech for hate speech, transphobic piece of shit, and shut him down, shouting over Peterson, interrupting his event so that people couldn't hear him. They had to leave the building because there were so many people inside of it and go outside, and even then they were followed. Even then, Peterson was shouted down. This type of behavior, this lazy thinking, is sadly common, and is present through many areas of life. 
You oppose legislation for minimum wage? You must hate the middle class. No, not so. You think that people are wrong about their religious beliefs? You're intolerant and you think religious people are stupid. No. You oppose entanglement between government and religion? Oh, you must want the rights of religious people taken away. No. You question whether ideas within Islam have something to do with violence or regard Islam as having problematic doctrine? You're Islamophobic. No. You question elements of feminist thought and refuse to identify as a feminist? Oh, that must mean you hate women. No. You're opposed to foreign wars. You must not support people in the military. No. You don't stand for the pledge. Oh, you must hate America and what it stands for. You oppose policies of affirmative action, so you must hate minorities. You're either with us or against us. You oppose Israeli foreign policy and America's great financial support for Israel, so you must be anti-Semitic. Common attitudes. These simplistic modes of thinking, often caused by identifying so closely with the group identity, viewing those who have dissenting views, those in contrast with your beliefs, dangerous. This is toxic. It closes the mind and stunts critical thinking. What room can there be for improvement or better understanding of people who hold differing perspectives if you close yourself off to learning? Indeed, there are people who espouse, let's call it, hateful rhetoric toward others and spend a significant part of their time vilifying particular groups of individuals. But Professor Jordan Peterson isn't the monster people are imagining. Perhaps they see them as some convenient target at the moment and assign others likely hateful motives to Peterson. Who knows? Rather than having constructive dialogue or rec recognizing that legitimate disagreement can be reasonable, that issues are complex, that nuance is important, that people can disagree and still find common ground rather than regarding the other as an enemy of the people, individuals close their minds, retreat to echo chambers, and take a scorched earth approach, demanding respect yet offering none. Rather than modeling the behavior they want to see, the chorus of, it's only okay when we do it, rules the day. Grounds for civility has an asterisk as long as one can be deemed the enemy for any given perceived offense. And they even eat their own, as purity tests are applied. Even the staunchest of male feminists, for instance, are cast out of the sisterhood, and certain left-leaning individuals are cast out as sexist Bernie bros who happen to be secret Putin agents. As you might expect, I'm a fan of Jordan Peterson. I especially enjoy his lectures on existentialism and personality, which share many parallels with Stoic philosophy I've been reading about, studying, hosting discussion groups on, and of course, creating YouTube videos here for public consumption. Peterson offers a well-researched, respectful, thoughtful approach to his presentations and ideas presented to the public. Perhaps he'll be critical of certain groups of people, postmodernists especially, who advocate he would consider false and destructive ideas. But nowhere in his content have I heard him use hateful rhetoric, nothing which comes close to what his opponent suggests. Regardless, people jump to extreme conclusions and present themselves extremely poorly to casual observers, seemingly motivated by destructive, unproductive anger, which seems to accomplish very little, if anything, to further the rights of LGBT individuals. And Peterson, of course, isn't the only target of this mob mentality in people now dubbed social justice warriors, as there is con continually a new witch of the week, a new enemy of the party, no matter how mild-mannered and well-intentioned or even ignorant people might be. Rather than educating or being kind, the mob assumes ill intent and resorts to a certain call-out culture, shaming, berating, and attacking imagined opponents they cast as subhuman, undeserving of respect. So, many start to question when they see people who they thought were on their side or on their team. They see them act in such repugnant ways. Where do I stand? Which group should I be part of? Do I want to identify with these protesters? Which labels should I use? If I don't like a political candidate left of center, must I be right-leaning? Perhaps people feel alienated and they're seriously questioning their own identity and partly waking up to what's going on, questioning people they used to follow, and seeing increasingly intolerant behavior from the crowd proposing to be about tolerance, acceptance, and equality. Maybe we started with a faulty idea, that we should be part of a team and think that people who share some ideas in common with us are our allies, that these people must be wholly rational. Perhaps we were wrong to be snarky to so casually dismiss people we thought were so repugnant, simply on the basis of words from our favorite commentator online, or in meat space outside of that, while we were never actually looking into what the person had to say and thoughtfully considered an alternate perspective. Perhaps instead of looking to identify in terms of a group label or a label at all, well, the better approach can be to think about ideas individually and examine your own beliefs. Be content with yourself and seek not to identify alongside others. Peterson, in fact, talks about this in his presentations. Many overwhelmingly have nothing to do with gender pronouns. That we should start to work on ourselves before looking to change the world, to get our own houses in order, and to start telling the truth to ourselves and others, 
to be more authentic, to expose ourselves to different perspectives so that we may learn from others, become more educated, and learn to cope in a world which includes a great deal of suffering. If only some of Peterson's detractors would do that and have a more reasonable dialogue. But what an interesting state that we are in, that so many now know about Peterson and his great work, that people will watch the shouting of transphobic piece of shit and think twice to watch Peterson's content and find anything but transphobia. Perhaps I never would have learned about Peterson if it were not for his detractors' repugnant behavior. So we take the event as simply what it is. The protesters show up, and we'll see what comes of it, as Peterson has suggested in his response. The Stoic writer Seneca talks about the potential madness of crowds, urging us to be critical of the mob mentality, to be self-reflective, and to be careful of whom we associate with. Here are some passages from Seneca's Letters from a Stoic. Do you ask me what you should regard as especially to be avoided? I say crowds, for as far yet you cannot trust yourself to them with safety. I shall admit my own weakness at any rate, for I never bring back home the same character that I took abroad with me. Certainly, the greater the mob with which we mingle, the greater the danger. The young character, which cannot hold fast to righteousness, must be rescued from the mob, for it is too easy to side with the majority. Withdraw unto yourself as far as you can. Associate with those who will make a better man of you. Welcome those with whom yourself can improve. The process is mutual, for men learn while they teach. So, question the mob mentality. Really analyze those who claim to be a force for good when they resort to repugnant behavior. Question the actions. Which fruits do these trees bear? Is Professor Jordan Peterson really some moral monster, a threat to the rights of LGBT individuals? I think not. His opposition to a legal document and views on pronouns and identity do not constitute hatred or transphobia. We can, of course, support rights for a group of people while being critical of certain legislation or approaches members of a particular group utilize. After all, many LGBT individuals have come out in support of Peterson and against Bill C-16, arguing that, well, not all members of a certain group speak for them. The limiting people to a certain identity and thinking all within said group think the same, well, that's quite the conundrum, too. Consider listening to what Peterson has to say, not only on gender pronouns and Bill C-16, but take time to listen to his classroom lectures on existentialism and personality, and psychology and philosophy, as he explores ideas of Jung, Piaget, Nietzsche, Carl Rogers, Dostoevsky, and many other thinkers, accessible and fascinating information provided by Peterson. He offers uplifting messages, challenges us to improve ourselves, and explores perennial human concerns, lots of parallels with Stoic philosophy which my viewers can surely benefit from and all in content he makes available here on YouTube, free to the public, on-demand information that might cost tens of thousands of dollars in a university. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more. You can find me on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and my website at justinbukula.com. Links are in the video description. Please subscribe, share, comment, and like the video if you find my contribution worthwhile. Watch earlier videos on this channel in which I explore perspectives within Stoic philosophy that can help improve your quality of life. Consider donating if you support my work and would like to see more, for this takes time and effort to produce content. I'll soon be uploading videos concerning gratitude from my March 2017 discussion group with the Human Association of Greater Philadelphia, and a companion video compiling my notes from the discussion. I will also explore healthy eating and exercise, sharing my personal reflections and mindset surrounding my recent weight loss and major lifestyle changes which contributed. Finally, I plan to address some criticisms of my approach to Stoic philosophy, the non-religious perspective offered by a former philosophy professor of mine whose opinions I value. I hope you enjoyed this video, some commentary on current events, yet recurring themes throughout history. I seek to have more scripted videos like this one, and to improve my video quality through using different approaches and learning how to create better YouTube content, although my time can be quite limited given other obligations. Have a great day.